Greetings, everyone. We come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. He wants you to know that Jesus loves you so much. Nobody will love you like Jesus Christ. Nobody is concerned about your life like Jesus Christ. Nobody can care for your life like Jesus Christ. Nobody lived an absolutely perfect life except Jesus Christ. Nobody died on the cross for the sins of mankind, was buried and rose again on the third day like Jesus Christ. He has no rival. He has no equal. No one is like him and no one compares to him. If you were to put him side by side with anyone who's ever lived, you will see that everyone falls short. Everyone is a sinner except Jesus Christ. So nobody can be a substitutionary sacrifice and die in our place and take the sins of the world upon themselves. Only Jesus Christ, because he lived a perfect life. He is the only one that can forgive you of your sins. He is the only one that can give you salvation. Not some ritual or ceremony or tradition of man or some world religion or philosophy, name them. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Not one of many ways, but the only way. And Jesus said, unless you believe I am, you will die in your sins. And what does that mean? That means you have to pay for your own sins for everything you've said or done in disobedience to God throughout your whole life. And he'll say, depart from me, I never knew you, you worker of lawlessness. How much better to be clothed in the righteous perfection of Jesus Christ, have your sins forgiven, and know that you're going to heaven because you're a citizen of heaven. Do you know Jesus Christ today? Are your sins forgiven? Are you born again? If you were to die today for whatever reason, there's a myriad of reasons why people die, from food poisoning to slipping and falling to car accidents and COVID and cancer and heart attacks and, and strokes and domestic violence and war and just so many myriad of reasons as to why people die. So you don't know how long you're going to live. It's as if everyone has an hourglass full of time. Time is a precious commodity. What you did 10 minutes ago can't be taken back. And you only have so much time. And we want you to receive Jesus Christ and believe in Him and entrust your life over to Him as the Savior of your soul and Him alone. No institution of man, no philosophy of man, no world religion of man, only Jesus Christ. Scripture says there is no wisdom, no counsel, or understanding against the Lord. Proverbs teaches us. Scripture says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness of, and all that dwell therein. Scripture teaches us he spoke the planets into existence. He calls all the stars by name. He causes the sun to rule by day and the moon and the stars to rule by night. He causes the winds to blow and the waters to flow. He positioned the sun not so far away that we freeze and not so close that we burn up. He is the one who keeps your heart beating throughout the day. How can you say no to such wonderful love that Jesus Christ offers? So many people don't want anything to do with Jesus Christ, yet he is the one who keeps your heart beating all day long and throughout your life. He is the author of life. Scripture says in him we live and move and have our being and he gives life and breath to all mankind, including everyone here in Santa Monica. Do you know the purpose of your life according to the scriptures? To know Jesus Christ, to receive his offer of forgiveness and salvation, to believe in him and who he is and what he accomplished on the cross and his glorious triumphant resurrection from the dead on the third day, to love him, to worship him, to glorify him, to exalt him, to praise him, to thank him, to pray to him, to have fellowship with him, and to spend eternity with him. Not to reject him and his offer of forgiveness and salvation and end up in hell for all eternity. That is not God's will for anybody. 
Your purpose is not to do what you want, reject Jesus Christ, and end up in hell for all eternity, wishing you were never born. Absolutely not. God desires that everyone come to the knowledge of the truth and be saved. And he said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And who the Son sets free is free indeed. You're all born with a bondage to sin and Satan because Adam sinned when he ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the Garden of Eden. You can blame it on him. And because of that sin, he plunged the whole human race into sin and depravity. We sin because we, we're sinners. We're born with this nature and you can't do anything about it. Only through Jesus Christ and your acceptance of who he is and your belief who he is and what he did and becoming born again, you can have a new nature. All things pass away. Behold, all things become new. That's what it means to be born again. Everyone has been born once physically. God wants you to be born spiritually of the Spirit of God. When the Holy Spirit of God comes and takes residence in your heart and your life and you become the temple of God and then you are eligible for heaven and then you become a citizen of heaven and then you know that you're going to heaven because scripture says his spirit bears witness with your spirit you're a child of God. He said as many as are led by the Spirit of God they are the sons and daughters of God. But what if you don't have the Holy Spirit of God that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwelling within you? And what if you're not the temple of God? Then we want you to know, Scripture teaches, you're not forgiven, and you, have, you do not have salvation, and you do not have heaven when you leave this earth. Scripture says, repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, that you might receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes, the gift of the Holy Spirit is given to those who have true genuine saving faith in Jesus Christ. Do you have faith in Jesus Christ? Not intellectual belief that he existed as a historical person, but where you transfer all your trust, all your belief to Jesus Christ and him alone, to the Savior of your soul. Only Jesus Christ. We are living in difficult times. We read about extreme weather conditions in different parts of the world. Tornadoes and hurricanes and earthquakes and hail and extreme rain. And we read about the pestilence and we read about war going on. And these are all things that were prophesied in Matthew 24, in Luke 21, and in Mark as well. And we don't want you to be ignorant as to what is happening in the world. And we want you to put your faith in Jesus Christ before it's too late. Because time is going by and you only have so many, so many days so many weeks, so many months, so many years, God knows. So why put it off another day? Why not entrust your life to Jesus Christ as the Savior of your soul? Only He can save you. Scripture says there is salvation in no other name. There is no other name given unto heaven among men by which we must be saved. And that is the name of Jesus Christ. He has the name above every name. And one day, Scripture says, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You do it now voluntarily while you have breath or you'll be forced to do it when you take your last breath and you stand before God and He'll say, depart from me, I never knew you, you worker of lawlessness. How much better to hear these wonderful words, well done, good and faithful servant enter into the joy of the Lord. What about for you? See, if you think about heaven, it's a place with no more tears, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more shame, no more sin, no more suffering, no more despondency or discouragement or despair or delusion or deception or disappointment or dysfunction. 
But hell, on the other pla on the other hand, is a place with no exit, no water, no Christians, no light, no repentance, no belief, and no exit, and no possibility of leaving. How terrible to think about anybody going to that place. My friend, we, we discuss it and we think about it and we go, just one person that ends up there is one too many. But Jesus Christ, he's a God full of love and grace and mercy and kindness and compassion. He knows everything. He sees everything. He hears everything. He knows if you're lonely. He knows what you did yesterday. He knows what you ate for breakfast, if you had breakfast. He knows what you're going to do tomorrow. He knows the thoughts of man. Scripture teaches us in Psalm 139 that he knows he's acquainted when we lie down and when we rise up. And he knows our thoughts from afar. Where can we go to flee from him? You can't. Scripture says the eyes of the Lord search to and fro across the whole earth. He sees everything. He hears everything. He knows everything. Nobody is like Jesus Christ. Nobody lived a life like Jesus Christ. And nobody taught like Jesus Christ. Let's think about some of his miracles. He changed water to wine at a wedding in Cana of Galilee. During a time, it was an embarrassment for the people in charge of the wedding to run out of wine. It was very important. And Jesus changed the outcome of that celebration by changing water to wine. We know that Jesus walked on water. We know that he calmed the sea. He cast out evil spirits. The blind were able to see. The mute were able to speak. The deaf were able to hear. He heals broken hearts. He sets at liberty those that are oppressed by the devil. He preaches deliverance to the captives. He sets the captives free. He gives people purpose and hope. Where is your hope today? People put their hope perhaps in credit cards or the stock market or sports events or videos. But do you put your hope in Jesus Christ? Only he can help you. He knows everything about you. He knows your financial struggles. He knows how many days you've had sickness in your life or in your family's life. He knows if you're lonely. He knows if you're depressed. And every single person on the planet, he knows equally. He knows everything. Think about it. Eight billion people on the planet and Jesus Christ knows everything about every person. You can't hide from him. You can't, if you go into a bridge, you think you can hide from him or go into a dark room. He still sees everything. What you do in the night is the daytime to him because he sees everything. He knows everything. So why not entrust your life to him? He loves you so much. God is love. We love him because he first loved us. I've known him now for 37 plus years. And it's been a wonderful relationship and journey. Unlike anything you can possibly imagine. Nothing compares to knowing Jesus Christ as your savior. Life, I've come to know and understand along with many other people, that life is empty and foolish and vain and futile without purpose, without hope, without forgiveness, without peace, without salvation, without protection from Satan and his demons that desire to steal, kill, and destroy, and without heaven. That is the situation for the unbeliever. And we just want you to live the abundant life. And it begins by, at first, putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Trusting in Him as the Savior of your soul. Nobody else, only Jesus. Amen. He is the way, the truth, and the life, not one of many ways. And we want you to understand that because there are so many religious systems throughout the world 
but only one way for forgiveness of sin, salvation, and heaven. It's only through Jesus. So we don't want you to be deceived or self-deceived into thinking everything is fine with your life, with your soul, and with your eternity if you're going to reject Jesus Christ. Think about the, the thief on the cross that was next to Jesus. Yes, two criminals were in that place. Jesus in the center. They both mocked Jesus at first, but then one of them changes his mind and says to Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to that thief on the cross, that criminal who did terrible things against humanity or the government, he said, today you will be with me in paradise. Wow, what a tremendous promise. No different than what he would say to us concerning John 3.16.